Rodney and I are so glad you joined us today. It's such a joy to come to you with the Word of God. Give them a good amen. amen. You know, I heard you say something on the program. That's the... I said to come to church. You said God didn't come to rescue fallen angels. He came to rescue fallen people. And you know, there may be a lot of people here in this building today are watching us by television who have fallen. Maybe you've done something wrong. Maybe you've committed some horrible sin, murder, crime, whatever. It's, it's still not too late for you. Jesus has come to rescue fallen people. All you have to do is say, I'm sorry, Jesus. I want to be restored. I want to serve God like I used to. Maybe you once served him, but you've gotten away. So you come to Jesus. Just like a little child. Yes. And he'll just take you right back in. He doesn't see you as a failure, just a learner. And everybody said? Yeah. All right, audience out there in television, lift up your Bibles with us. We're going to wave them around a little bit and make our confession. Amen. Yeah. Everybody say, I'm happy, I'm happy. to be in Lakewood Church. Yeah. I'm glad I've got a Bible. Yeah. All right, let's say, this is my Bible. Yeah. I am what it says I am. I have what he says I have. I, have I can do what he says I can do. I Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same in Jesus under the shadow of the Almighty. I heard about a, a, little, a little bear that got all puffed up because he was so powerful. This little old tiny bear, just, just, just everywhere he'd go, everybody would move out of his place. Ferocious dogs would run. Other animals would run. And boy, he was thinking about how strong I am, how powerful I am. He didn't know they were running because behind him was a great big papa bear. And they weren't running from him. They were running from the papa bear. He was in the shadow of the papa bear. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. It's where are you going to live? Now, I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about spiritually. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. It's not some place you just visit. It's where you have decided to live in the very presence of God. I want to read you a scripture. It says in 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy chapter 3, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now look up here, folks. I tell you, perilous times are upon us today. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. I'm aware that all of you people, thousands sitting before me here, plus the television audience, you know you are not living in a world of tranquility. Perilous times have come. We just had a nurse testify that in the psychiatric ward where she is children three and four years old and they have them up to 90 years old. The power of the devil has been unleashed on this generation. But I'm so glad we know where to dwell. Paul said this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For they shall, men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those who are good. If that's ever true uh, in any generation, it's, a, it's, it's true today. There is a world out there that despises the church. Despisers of those who are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. Yes, you go to church. Yes, you visit once in a while. Yes, your name is on the church roll. Yes, you've been baptized. Yes, you've had, had communion. Yes, you pray your prayers, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. 
Where is the power? Paul said this would come. And I believe that we're living in that generation. Let me read you another scripture from Paul. In chapter 4 of 1 Timothy. Now the Spirit speaks expressly. That in the latter days, latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. So we are living in that kind of a generation today. There are dangers to our family. We have to struggle to keep our children where they ought to be. I'll tell you, this is no time to play with the idea that you can just live footloose and fancy free and let your children die and go to hell. There's an assault on our families. Husband and wives are struggling and children are being raised in, in, in an atmosphere many times that's not conducive to good things. We are being attacked in our finances. Oh, the media is geared to tell us how bad everything is. Oh, I tell you this, it may be bad for the world, but it's not bad for God's children. Oh, our Father owns, uh, our Father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I tell you that our Father owns all the gold and all the silver. But there's, a, there's an assault upon us today, and we need to know how to live in the safety of God. Not all Christians live in the safety of God. But you see, there is a place. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow like that papa bear it, it, with that little old tiny bear. That little old tiny bear wasn't anything. It was the shadow that scared everybody. You shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I want to encourage you people today to make up your mind that you're going to be committed to live for God. I mean, you're going to dwell. You're not going to be on the outskirts. You're going to dwell in that secret place of the Most High. What does all that mean? You're going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It means that you have made a quality decision that church is important. Now, God doesn't dwell in this building. I don't mean that that way. You need to make a quality decision in these dark days to be committed to a local church. You know, we believe in the local church. You people out there uh, that uh, live in Houston or around the world, wherever you hear this across the nation, there are good local churches where you live. Well, you say they got hypocrites in them. Well, if they didn't and you join, it'd have them in there then. So why worry about the hypocrites? Just get on in there and quit being one yourself. Amen. Amen. And if you don't like hypocrites, don't go to hell. Hell's where they're all going to live forever. Amen. Oh, no. A church is not a, a place for perfect people. A church is a place where needy people meet God. Amen. So make a quality decision to be a church-going man, a church-going woman, a church-going young person. You know when I got saved? On Sunday morning I got saved. Did you know I didn't even think about not going back to church? Why the, why, how foolish it would be for me to get saved Sunday morning and not think about going to church Sunday night. Man, I want to, I want to have church every day of the week. See, make a commitment to live in the shadow of the Almighty, under the, uh, in the secret place of the Most High. Make a quality decision to go to church, learn the Word of God, be taught, have a shepherd, and be a, an example. We didn't use our children as an excuse to stay out of church. We took them to church. And here they are, all serving God. So you need to make a commitment to be a church-going person. And then you need to make a commitment to, to be a Bible-reading, praying person. Draw nigh to God, and he said, I'll draw nigh to you. And return to God, and I'll return to you. You see, you need to, you need to make up your mind in this dark generation in which we live to read the Bible. Well, you say, Brother Osteen, I don't understand it. Well, you can understand some of it. And what you understand will keep you so busy, you don't have to worry about what you don't understand. And you ought to read the Bible like you read a letter from your wife. It's a love letter. 
And uh, you don't read it to dissect it. You know, the Bible says the Word of God is meat and milk. You know, when I go to a restaurant, I and eat a steak and drink some milk. I don't stop the waiter and say, tell me who killed this cow. <laughs> How old was this cow? What kind of food did you give this cow? And just tell me exactly how she was killed, with a bullet or a knife. See, I don't want to know all about the gory details. I just want to eat the steak. Amen. Amen. So what you need to do is not worry about all the theology of the Bible. Just eat it like it is milk, drink it like it's milk, and eat it like it's meat. Stay in the Word of God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You need to make a commitment, to, whether you're young or old, to, to live for God from the first moment you get up till, till you go to bed. Get God on your mind and live for God and serve God. Let there be no vacillating whatsoever. You are a committed Christian. Now notice here that if you dwell in the secret place, you will be dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, and you will be in the shadow of the Almighty. You know, Abraham had the opportunity to live for God or not live for God. And God called Abraham out and said, Come, come abide in my presence. Abraham obeyed and left his family and his country, and God made him a blessing to the world. Lot was his nephew, and one day they looked out over, uh, you know, they were going to have to separate. God had blessed them so much, and Lot looked out there at the well-watered plains of Jordan, and he said, boy, that's my place. No water here. I'm going over there. See, he didn't choose to dwell in the secret place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He went by his own mind. Anybody in the right mind is going to choose a well-watered valley to, to all this parched land where Abraham is. So he chose according to his mind, and he got in trouble. Got down there in Sodom and Gomorrah. You see, when you decide to live by your mind instead of by the Spirit of God, you'll get in trouble. But once you make up your mind that you're going to follow God and the Bible and dwell in the secret place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of the Almighty, then you are there with the Most High and you are with the Almighty. Hallelujah. See, when you re recognize that you're in the shadow of the Almighty, that you're abiding in the secret place of the Most High, See, there might be some highs in this world, but we serve the Most High. Amen. Oh, yes, there's a high in drinking beer, I guess. <laughs> yes, there's a high in taking a shot of bourbon. Sure, you can get high on cocaine or crack. You can get high a lot of ways, and, but they're false highs. You can live in this generation under the shadow of the Most High. Amen. 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 See, uh, we are living in a dark, evil, promiscuous, loose generation. Our children are being visited by demon spirits, manifesting themselves at an early age. We are living in a world that is crooked in its morals. So we need to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We need to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. See, we begin to dwell in the shadow of the Almighty and dwell in the secret place of the Most High. So when Lisa was born abnormal with cerebral palsy, thank God yeah, that cerebral palsy was mighty, but we had the Almighty. Amen. 1981, when the doctors told Dodi she was dying of cancer, had a few weeks to live, that cancer was, was mighty, mighty in her body. But thank God we had the Almighty. In the name of Jesus drove that out of her body and she's alive today and Lisa is well and healthy today and normal today because we lived in the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah. 
Oh, you got a lot of problems. Yes, you got a lot of mountains. Yes, you got a lot of tunnels. Yes, you got a lot of things facing you. But if you live under the shadow of the Almighty and dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you will be able to make it. I got tapes back there in our library. Back down to years ago when I preached, folks, I tell you, dark times are coming. Dark times are coming. And I said, if bread gets a dollar loaf and gasoline goes to a dollar a gallon, we'll be able to make it. Amen. I said, Almighty God, well, now we've surpassed all of that. And darker days are coming, but no day is too dark for our God, for He is the light of the world. Amen. Amen. You need to recognize that you can live in God's presence, committed to Him. He is the Most High, and He is the Almighty. You think about when God looked down at the slaves in Egypt, the Jewish people, and uh, they were killing all the little babies. They said, kill all the boy babies. That was the decree from Pharaoh. And all of them began to tremble because the little baby, baby boys were being killed. And God said, don't you know I'm the Almighty? I'll tell you what you do, Moses' mother. I want you to take him, put him in a little basket. Put him out there in the water. And just sail him right into the bosom of Pharaoh's palace. Oh no, God, no, God. He's the one who wants to kill him. He's the one who wants to murder him. He's the one behind all of this. God said, I am almighty. I can do anything. I don't have to hide your child. Send him to Pharaoh's palace. And that little boat went right up there to Pharaoh's palace. And Moses, as a little baby, crying. And Pharaoh's daughter came out and looked at him and said, I'm going to adopt him as my own. God said, I can save you a child in the midst of a, of a wicked world. You can, I'll tell you, with God, your children can walk in the midst of drugs and not take it. Your, your children can walk in the midst of immorality and not get involved in it. Our God is almighty. He's almighty. Amen. Glory. You see, we live under the shadow of the almighty. Oh, I'm so grateful for all that God has done for me and my family. I'm so grateful that God healed Gary, our son-in-law, hopelessly sick, shut inside of a room, unable to get out, dying. Thank God God saved him and healed him. Well, he was already saved, but he, well, he saved him and he healed him. Thank God. And he's perfectly well today, married to the most beautiful girl in the world. Stand up, April. Give her a hand clap, would you? Look out over that audience. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Give her a hand clap. And to tell all the world she's expecting a baby. If it's a boy, they're going to name it John. If it's a girl, they're going to name it Hillary. That's all my two names. That's the first they knew about that. In the shadow of the Almighty. Now, years later when Moses had failed God, spent 40 years on the backside of the desert, 80 years old, God came to him in a burning bush and said, uh, I've surely seen the affliction of my people that are in Egypt. I have, I know their sorrows. I've heard their cries. Now come, I'm going to send you to deliver them. Moses said, who am I? I don't have any power to deliver millions of people out of Egypt, the greatest dynasty of our day. He said, pick up that stick, that rod, and go down into Egypt. And one lone man went down into Egypt. Well, I think his brother went with him, uh, Aaron. And uh, they went down into Egypt with nothing but a rod. But that rod was dedicated to God. And in a little while after signs and wonders and miracles happened, they came out in front of two million, two to three million slaves marching behind them, delivered by the power of God. That is the Almighty. Then they came to the Red Sea. Behind them was Pharaoh's army. They don't know what to do, but thank God they're in the shadow of the Almighty. They began to cry out to God, and God said, stretch out your rod. And I'll tell you, he stretched out that rod, 
and the Red Sea departed and the east wind blew and, and they went over not on muddy ground, they went over on dry ground. The miracle is God parted the sea and made them walk on dry ground. That's the Almighty God. And they went through and Pharaoh's army drowned when the, they tried to come through there and the chariot wheels came off and the water came on and they were destroyed. You see, that's the Almighty. Say, I serve the Almighty. Say it again. Say it again. You see, when this Almighty God came into the world, He was in the body of Jesus. Mark chapter 5, Jesus faces the three great enemies of the human race. It's the greatest case of demon possession, 6,000 demons in one man. The greatest case of, of disease given up by doctors for 12 years. And the greatest case of death because the person had already died. Jesus stood before all of them as the almighty son of the living God. He raised the dead, drove 6,000 demons out of that person, and healed that woman with an issue of blood. That's our great eternal God. Sure, you're living in a dark day. Sure, you're living in a time when everything is going to pieces and the world says we're not going to make it. But I'll tell you, if you'll make up your mind to dwell and live where you ought to live, dwell in the secret place of the Most High, abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and then give your life to Him, serve Him, and whatever you face, whether it's poverty, financial distress, sickness in your body, trouble in your home, trouble with your child, remember you are in the shadow of the Almighty and He will see you through.